Hello and welcome to the fourth session of a discipline between carrot and stick. And today we are going to take you on a journey. Here we'll introduce our main character who would start helping you understand and unraveling the discipline problems existing in our education institutions. But before that, a quick recap of what we did in the last session. We spoke about the three most important places in a school and that is what a school is defined with your labs, your library and your toilets or the laboratory. And of course we spoke about how do you improve the restrooms in the school. We spoke about adding new techniques like wash basins and the perfect spots for boys to urinate and some deeper questions about the use of CCTV cameras in toilet, especially after a major incident in the Ryan Gurgaon school or talk about the mixed gender toilets, things like that. And it was an episode I got a lot of feedback on good ideas added on to it, compliments, criticism, but that's what these sessions are for. These are food for your thoughts so that you can think about what can we do to improve our education system as a whole. So my character for session four is Harry. I chose a very easy name, of course, from the protagonist of Harry Potter series, but this is a different Harry. He's a third grader. So ideally, our Harry is about eight or nine years old, but Harry has a series of discipline problem. So here is a Harry drooling over the world map perhaps looking at where can I cause more trouble or mischief and this is a boy whose behavior has been a constant source of problems and disturbances in the school. Of course this is a fictitious character and I hope we are not looking out for Harry's in a school but if we have a Harry's or Hermione's in a school what do we do? I'm looking at very important area of discipline called delivering consequences. What happens is a lot of times we warn our children, you know, as parents, as mothers, as fathers, uncles and aunts, teachers, we warn them. If you do this, I'm not going to give you an ice cream. And then what happens at the family time, somehow the emotions overwhelms you and you give them the cornetto scoop that you promised not to give. Or you say, I'm going to throw you out of the classroom. While I don't like the choice of language, but teachers use it and then consequence is not as harmful. I'm going to beat you. I'm going to make you do this. And what happens is these are you creating a devil in a child. Empty warning fall on deaf ears. And unfortunately, a lot of us are only creating this idealism where punishment is due, but you're not following it up. And this is one of the major areas while I'm challenging the very notion of punishment, but I'm saying if you threaten somebody, follow it up. So we should learn what a threat should be. So let's look at a example of a school's social contact. So this contract that school has, what I mean by a social contract is not a rule of book, but internal rules the schools frame for itself. A school said this is acceptable, this is tolerable, and this is not tolerable or not acceptable. So this school's contract says any child who abuses, cusses, uses the swear word, uses the slang language, physically assaults other children would be sent home immediately, period. So now the school's contract is very clear. There is no ambiguity here. It says that if you are being bullied by these means, you will be sent home. You know, I'll give you a similar case study that happened in Indian institutions where ragging was a rage. You know, of course, I was perhaps blessed by not being beaten black and blue or being asked to do shameful sexual deeds in ragging. But I've known enough instances where ragging was at the peak during the early 90s and the late 90s until the anti-ragging laws came in. But what was happening is most of the schools were not following up because some of the students were very influential. They were coming from rich families. The parents came in. But then there was no follow up until when the follow up started happening. The ragging started deteriorating. It was no more a cool thing to do. You know, there were ragging related deaths in, in, in schools, in colleges. And I'm looking at bullying related thing. On a side note, of course, we'd love to do a session on that. There have been online Facebook bullying and there was a boy who was tempted to commit suicide just because Facebook friends bullied him. Only with words, not even physical assault. This is where you have to be very, very clear with your rules. So now here is the most important slide for this 
Perhaps this is the shortest session I'm doing, but the most powerful session called delivering consequences. So now our boy Harry has been told his parents have been briefed about the social contract of the school. He's come to the school, he sees children and he knows bullying is a big no, no. What does he do? First time he pushes and assaults his neighbor. As he's doing that, what's the consequence? He is sent home immediately. Now look at this. He did something that was against all there was, you know, it was only perhaps a matter of one hour in the school. The school said nothing doing. Call the cab, send the child home. And you know, I, I'll explain how you do that also in, in the later episodes. But our point here is he did it first time, he was sent home. Second time, he cursed after a small tiff at this girl. He said a very bad swear word. Consequence, sent home immediately. I know it is easier said than done when you talk to parents like that, but the parents are aware of the social contract. No ambiguity, no dilemma here, no unclear thoughts, very transparent, very clear. Third time, again he cursed and screamed at a girl. Consequence was the same, he was sent home immediately. Boy, this is amazing. For the first time, Harry was upset and began to cry. He said he did not want to go home and the teacher replied son you have made a choice the third time was a clincher you see the the student understood the rules not only did he understand the rule he understood and became an example for others you know once in school i think perhaps in grade seven i read a story called half penny half penny was name of a south african boy who stole an orange and i still remember the story so vividly where he just stole an orange because he's hungry but the boy was actually sent to juvenile prison now the boy said why me there's so many people stealing he said no you have to be made an example of for the story was a different tangent it was more on the lines of to kill a mocking bird but the idea of the whole thing is one boy being made an example one student being made an example is a deterrent for everybody in the school and that's what we are coming across so the third time when you were sent home was a clincher you are adamant with the rule it's not one time thing it was a clear instruction the school is giving so what happened the success of this following up and delivering consequence was there is a genuine care for the students progress and welfare whose progress of course harry's progress harry has to learn the hard way there was no blame there was no humiliation there was no criticism there was in fact no stick or reprimand in the sense of physical punishment because that is a no-no the here idea was parents are involved they also face the consequence the teachers and authorities face the consequence they know what's happening more importantly the student the harry in our case and the peers know the consequence and this is the success of the story this is the entire summary of a day first level offense and how you deal with it this is episode four i hope you understand and you look at what i'm trying to explain to you that this is the choice that we give students as I go ahead, I'll give you some bag of tricks. What I mean by bag of tricks is I'll give you some small, small tips and tricks that you can apply to immediately solve a burning bush before it becomes a raging forest fire. Give them a choice. Bag of trick one. So BOD one says, let's say two kids are fighting, Parvez and Tariq, and then suddenly they are in a queue, in a line, and they're fighting. Teacher comes in, the first grade teacher, and most of my I'll go ahead and, and increase the severity with senior and high grade students, but right now we're talking about primary students. So the teacher says, Parvez and Tariq, please make a different choice. You see what happens is kids typically know that they are doing wrong. And using this giving a choice technique gives them the chance to change their choices and make a teacher proud. And kids really want to do, despite their occasional face-offs, they don't want to see a disappointed adult. So instead of yelling at them, you give them a choice. This is again about consequences. Bag of two tricks is for us adults. You know, most of us as parents also, we have this short temper for a very short time. And that's when you say something you regret later, you do something that you don't wish to do. I know a mother who pushed her son outside just in that short range of time and a scooter ran over. You know, a small thing, big trouble. And didn't she regret? 
did not the scars of this happen and the child would remain with remain with the child over a long time you know it's like the raging bull all you need to do is hold on for some time i and my wife had the technique when our kids were growing up and they were really young when one of them would become really mad we will leave the crime scene i guess i call it i will leave the room and the moment i left the room in a two minutes when my when my hormones settled down i had a better reaction time to deal with the situation simple as that bot2 final bot for today's session is add a dollop of guilt how you add dollops of ice cream scoops what you happens is if a kid is doing something ridiculous look at her like you are disgusted or make her feel little guilty i use her because it really works with that gender but it works with most of the pre primary primary kids the kindergartens one specially let your child's you know just just let the child feel the hurt as if you are the one the child has let down and believe me that's a very very strong emotion you know if you all you need to do is let's say a child is fiddling with a piece of fruit in the grocery store in the supermarket and you don't want the child to catch the cold now instead of saying something like don't touch it you say that now someone's going to buy that and your germs will be all over it you see this gives the child both a good reason to stop and a chance to think about how her actions would affect others there was a research done where people were wasting a lot of water and and not using soap in the hospitals right so they learned two different sections i think malcolm uh, malcolm uh, gladwell did uh, the research there he wrote it in one of the books if i remember correctly and one section of hospital uh, toilets and and the wash basins were written a message about themselves sanitize your hand it's good for your health result 20% only used it another section said sanitize your hand and save the patient's life result 75% used it because people start caring more when others are also involved you know tell us chain smoker tell us one who smokes cigarettes you know 15 cigarettes 10 cigarettes a day that your health is deteriorating he is least bothered tell him your children will suffer because of the passive smoking he will take a concern this is so much about indian indian scenario the truck drivers were driving very rash on the on the highway especially at night causing a lot of accident lot of things went into it they were told about the dangers the accidents and you know all those uh, uh, accident photographs like you put the photographs on the tobacco packs nothing worked what only one small thing happened all the truck drivers were asked to put a family photograph especially the wife the spouse and the children on the dashboard and they would look at them every now and then as they drive result accident rate dropped people are more concerned when others especially your near and dear ones are involved that's where you you become a role model and you add that dollop of guilt and it will help them i hope you enjoyed today's fourth session of discipline between carrot and stick i look forward to your emails at dau@skyeducation.in you can always tweet me at my handle ceo teacher there is an entire series called ceo teacher i hope you become one of them until then have a great disciplining culture in your school bye bye see you next time